and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at section 1 of the 2017 Higher paper. This looks at multiple choice. If you've not already tried this paper then I recommend that you pause the video, try this paper and use the video to help you mark it. So looking at question 1, which of the following bonds is least polar? To be able to do this, you need to look at the difference in electronegativity. You will find electronegativities on page 11 of your data book. So the differences in electronegativity are 0 0.1 for carbon and iodine, 1.5 for carbon and fluorine, 0 0.5 for carbon and chlorine, and 0 0.3 for carbon and bromine. So the least polar bond is that with the smallest difference in electronegativity. So our answer is A. Which of the following compounds would be most soluble in water? For a compound to be soluble in water, you need to have polar groups on it. So A has no polar groups, so it won't be very soluble in water. B has one polar group here with the hydroxyl group. C has one polar bond here with the carbon to oxygen double bond. And D has one, two, three, four, five. This means that D will be the most soluble in water. Which of the following atoms has the greatest attraction for bonding electrons? This question relies on you understanding what the greatest attraction for bonding electrons means. The word that we use for that is electronegativity, so you will need to look at page 11 of your data book. You need to find the highest electronegativity. So sulfur is 2.5, silicon is 1.9, nitrogen is 3.0, and hydrogen is 2.2. This means that nitrogen has the greatest electronegativity and therefore the greatest attraction for bonding electrons. So which type of structure is found in phosphorus? Phosphorus is one of the molecules that you need to learn and comes in P4 molecules. This means that the bonding found in phosphorus is covalent molecular. So here you have an experiment that you may have tried in class. So the polarity of molecules can be investigated using a charged rod. The charged rod will attract a stream of polar liquid flowing from a burette. Which of the following liquids would not be attracted? So you need to know what type of bonding is present within each of these liquids. So in water, you have the following structure, which means that it has hydrogen bonding. This is very polar. Propanone has this structure and has permanent dipole, permanent dipole attractions because of this polar bond here, so this would be attracted. Propanol has this structure. It has an OH bond like water, so we'll have hydrogen bonding. Again, very polar, so will be attracted to the rod. Hexane, however, is a hydrocarbon and has no polar bonds. It's completely non-polar, so only has London dispersion forces, no polarity at all, so this will not be attracted to the rod. For question six, the best way to do this would just be to try and balance the equation. So if you balance the equation in the way that you would usually, the method I use for balancing equations is to write all the elements underneath the arrow on each side, write how many there are, and then balance from there. So the most important element we have here is phosphorus, so I'm going to balance that first. 
So we have two on this side, but uh, four over here. So I'm going to put a two in front of the phosphorus. So we've now got four, but we've also got eight hydrogens now. I'm then going to look at hydrogen because oxygen is here on its own. So we can balance that last to make up for however many oxygens we have at the end. So we've got eight hydrogens on the left, but two on the right. So if we put a four in front of the water, we now have eight hydrogens. Well, we've now got extra oxygen. So we've got 14 oxygens on this side. We've only got two over here. So if we put a seven in front of here, we now have 14. If we now look at what we've put in, we have X equals two, so it can only be C or D. We have Y equals seven and Z equals four. What is the systematic name for the compound below? So the best way to do this is to just look at the structure and try and name it without looking at any of the names here. So look for the longest chain of carbons. So we have three here. Number them from the end closest to the functional group. One, two, three. We've then got these two groups attached. They're both the same, so they're both methyls and they're both on number two. So if we were to try and name this, we would have 2, 2, dimethyl, got three carbons, so it's propan, and our OH is on number one, so it's propan all. So if we now look at the names that we have here, this leads us to B. Question 8. Which of the fatty acids is most unsaturated? If you have a look at this first part here of the name and write down a general formula style for this. So we have CN and then if we do H2N and then work out what's happened. So 15 times 2 is 30 minus 1 is 29. We have CN H2N plus 1. Here we have CN H2N plus minus 3 and CnH2n plus 1. So the ones that have CnH2n plus 1 are fully saturated. If you then take off two hydrogens to get Cn to CnH2n minus 1, you have one double bond. If you then take off four hydrogens to get to the minus three, you have two double bonds. So for every double bond that you have, you take off two hydrogens from this here. So that means that our most unsaturated is C. You could also sit and draw them all out if you wished, but that would take a long time. Which of the following is not a step in a free radical chain reaction? So step one in a free radical chain reaction is initiation. Step two is propagation. Step three is termination. So A, activation, is not a step in a free radical chain reaction. Which of the following is an isomer of ethyl propanoate? So the first thing you need to do is to check how many carbons and hydrogens and oxygens you have and only focus on those within the structures you're given. So here we have C5, H10, O2. Methyl propanoate will only be C4, so we can ignore that straight away. Pentantuone only has one oxygen, so we can ignore that one as well. So now we're looking at pentanoic acid and pentane 1,2-diol. If we draw these structures out, and then count up the hydrogens. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So here we have C5, H10, O2. 
So C must be our answer. So essential oils are used in fragrance and you need to know the definitions of them. As an oil, they're not water soluble, so they're either A or B. As they're used in fragrance, they must be volatile, so the answer is B. The definition for an enthalpy of combustion is something that you need to learn. So the enthalpy of combustion is always when one mole of your hydrocarbon burns and it burns completely in oxygen, so the answer is C. Here we're looking for the strongest reducing agent. You need to look at page 12 of your data book. And when you look at page 12, you have the reduction equations. The strongest reducing agents are at the top left. The strongest oxidizing agents are at the bottom right. You can remember this by looking at the bottom right, you will find oxygen. So that should give you a little uh, memory jog that that's where your strongest oxidizing agents are. So then you look at the opposite side for the strongest reducing agents. If you look for the strongest reducing agent, you'll find that it's lithium right up at the top of page 12. Atom economy. You'll find the equation for atom economy at the front of your data book. So the equation for atom economy is GFM of desired product divided by the GFM of all reactants. So in this case, our desired product is titanium. So C and D are not correct. And then we want the mass of all of our products. So that's going to be 189.9 plus 2 because of this part here, times 243. So our answer for this one is B. So the vitamin C content of a carton of orange juice was determined by four students. Each student carried out the experiment three times and these are the results that they got. So the most reproducible results were produced by who? So you're looking for the results that are closest in value to each other. So that would be student C. Okay, so they've got 26.9, 27.0 and 26.9. These ones are the closest. So C is our answer. So here we have a reaction that you've never came across before, but they've given you an equation to have a look at. Essentially what you're doing here is adding HCN across the C double bond O double bond to get this product here. So we've now got another product to look at and we're trying to work out what did we uh, start with to be able to get this. So we've added HCN across this bond here. So we must have started with a reactant with this structure. Then we just have a look at the options that we have and A fits this one the best. Okay, so a dynamic equilibrium is another definition that you need to learn. So dynamic equilibriums happen when the rate of forward reaction equals that of the backward reaction. The concentrations of reactants and products can be equal but this doesn't always happen so it cannot be B. Here we have a bond enthalpy question. And for bond enthalpy questions we're adding together all the bonds that are broken and then taking away all of the bonds that are made. So for the sum for this one we would have 436 plus 194 minus 2 times 366 give us negative 102. So it's always bonds broken minus bonds made. Okay, which of the following is the structural formula for glycerol? So this helps if you know the systematic name for glycerol. So propane, one, two, three, trial. 
So we need to have three carbons, so we cannot have B. This one here only has two hydroxyl groups. This one has a carboxyl group. And here we have our three hydroxyl groups. Which line in the table best describes the effect of adding a catalyst to the following reaction? So when you add a catalyst to a reaction, you don't change the position of equilibrium, you just get to the position quicker. So C and D um, are not correct. Catalysts will always speed up a reaction. For an equilibrium, they speed up both the forward and the backward reaction. But here we're only looking at the forward, so it will be B. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates on new videos. Bye for now.